This video that you're about to watch is from my Omni Model course. If you want to get access to the entire course, you can get access to it for free. Yes, for free by going to my website at allentrades.me. The link to the website will also be in the description below. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, let's get into it. So we just went over the introduction, went over the overview of what this course will cover. Now let's actually get into the course. So what is day trading? So basically day trading is predicting whether a particular asset will appreciate or depreciate over time. If price is going up, that means you're bullish. Or if you think price is going up, then that means you're bullish. If you think price is going to go down, then that means you're bearish. So if we look at the picture that I have in the middle, you can see that I have two signs that say sell high and buy low. That is the essence of day trading. We want to sell at the highs, ride that all the way down, and then we want to buy at the lows and ride it all the way up. So for example, let's go over a bullish example. Let's say that you're trading gold, right? It's eight at eight in the morning. You buy gold that's worth a thousand dollars. Then in the next few hours, that same price of gold rallies up and now is worth 1500. You can sell back that same amount of gold that you bought for 1500. So now you've bought something for a thousand dollars, sold it for 1500. So that will give you a profit of $500. Now, vice versa, if you're bearish, let's say that it's eight in the morning, you're trading gold and you sell a certain amount of gold for a thousand dollars. Then in the next few hours, it depreciates, it goes down because you're bearish. And now that same amount of gold is now worth $500. So now you buy that gold for $500. So basically you sold something for a thousand dollars that you actually bought for 500, giving you a profit of $500. Now that may sound a little confusing. So think of it like this. Let's say you're a sneakerhead, right? You sell sneakers for a living or it's like your side hustle or whatever, right? And you know that you have a connect or you have a broker or whatever the case may be, where you can buy a specific pair of shoes for $500. But you meet someone online that's willing to pay for that same amount of shoes for a thousand dollars. So you make the sale with the person online. But remember, you don't have the pair of shoes yet. You just know that you can go later on in the day, buy that same pair of shoes for five hundred dollars and then ship it off to the customer for that thousand dollar sale that you made, giving you the profit of five hundred dollars. So going back to day trading, it's basically the same thing. But. You may be questioning yourself and are asking to yourself, how do I sell something, right? That I don't technically own. Like, how is that even possible? And that's exactly where brokers come into play. So here I have the trader, I have the broker, and then I have the account, right? So basically what a broker is, it's the middleman. So you have the trader, he sends his money to a broker. Then that broker opens a account on behalf of the trader and the assets that are within that account are supposed to be entitled to the trader. Now the trader, depending on the situation that you have with your broker, but in our case, we're going to have full control over that account. We're going to instruct the broker on how to trade that account through the buy and sell orders like we were just talking about previously when I was going over the gold example. So you're basically telling the broker when to go long, when to go short, which basically means when to buy, when to sell. And then depending on how that account does, hopefully that they're winning trades, all the assets that you win are entitled to you, including the money that you deposited. But I want to make it clear that you don't technically place the trades in the market. You're telling the broker how to trade the account for you, if that makes sense. But now due to technology, this transaction happens within milliseconds. And how does that happen? Well, basically the broker is taking the opposite side of your trade because for any efficient marketplace to exist, you need to have the same amount of liquidity or money on both sides of the market. So if someone is buying a certain amount of gold for a thousand dollars, you need to have someone that's willing to sell the same amount of gold for a thousand dollars and may the best man win depending on what gold does, right? So the way that these markets are able to be so efficient and you're able to place a trade within milliseconds is that the broker is taking the opposite end of your trade. Now, why would they do that? Because honestly, 95% or whatever the stats say of traders fail. Majority of traders fail. So it makes perfect sense for the broker to take the opposite side because if 95% of them are failing, that means the broker is winning 
95% of the time. Now, most brokers probably have some type of algorithm in place to highlight the traders that are actually successful and then they A-list them, which basically means that they're going to take the exact trades that they're taking. They're copying their trades. Instead of taking the opposite side, they're taking the actual side that the trader um, is taking. Now, we'll never be able to actually have proof that this happens, but it's the only way for these markets to be ran efficiently and for brokers to stay in business. They have to B-list, which means take the opposite side, or A-list the good traders. Because if that wasn't the case, then every time someone entered a trade, they would have to scramble out around or find someone that's willing to take the opposite side of the trade with the same amount. Now, all of this that I'm telling you, this is for the traders like you and me, the small traders. And by small, I mean probably under $10 million. If you're trading under that, then you're within the regular broker realm. Now, when you're not outside that realm, I honestly, I don't know what happens. I'm not trading with $10 million, but I can imagine that they actually have to find a real counterparty, which means someone to take the opposite end of the trades, which is why when you have these market crashes, the crash is actually happening over a period of like quarters, months. So if they're able to execute their trades within milliseconds, then no market crash would, they, would be able to hurt these big banks that we know of. But because they're not able to get in and out of positions at the rate that we are, because we're not trading with so much size as they're trading with, it takes them time to find that counterparty to take the opposite end of their trade. And then if the market is crashing, right? So let's say the market's going down. Who wants to take the opposite side? Like, I know I'm going to be a loser. So it's hard to find counterparty, which is why when these market crashes or th which is why these market crashes hurt the bigger banks. But we don't have to worry about that unless you're going to hit 10 million. And if you do, kudos to you. I wish the best for you. I hope I'm able to get there. But right now we're just trying to make a living, trying to get some wealth for our family, our friends, or maybe some charities that you want to donate to, right? So now that you've got a good understanding of what brokers are, let's move on to some account terminology. So the first account term that you may need to know is equity. What is equity? It's basically the amount of money that's in your account in total. So this does not include winning or losing trades. So let's say you have like that gold trade we were talking about. If you are still within that trade and you haven't closed the trade, that money does not count for your equity. Your equity is how much you have, not including any open trades. Next, we have balance. Now, balance is the entire amount of money in your account, including the equity. I mean, I'm sorry, including the open trade. So if you had that gold trade open, it would be how much money you had before the trade. And then based off whether you're up or down, add that to your existing balance. And that is your overall balance. Next, we have contract in lots. That is the size of the position that you have. We use contracts for the futures market and we use lots for the Forex market, which we will get into in the next video. Then we have your entry price, your stop loss, and your take profit. And your entry price is the price that the broker recognizes your entry at. So remember how I said, you're going to tell the broker what you want to do. So you're going to tell the broker, okay, I want to go long now. You place that through your computer, tablet, device, whatever you're using. And then usually within milliseconds, your trade is placed. But price could change a little bit in that millisecond. So you might want to enter at the thousand dollar mark, but within a millisecond, it's at a thousand dollars and one. So your entry price is where the broker realizes your entry with that millisecond or however much time you have. Then we move on to stop loss, which is the preset price in trading that automatically closes your account. So let's say you enter a trade and you know that if it gets to this level, I'm probably wrong and I want to get out the trade. You can preset that level, tell the broker, Hey, if it gets down to X, X level, take me out the trade. That means I'm wrong based off the analysis that I had. Then we have the take profit, which is the exact opposite of the stop loss. It's the preset level that you tell the broker, Hey, I'm in profit. I'm happy here. Please take me out the trade. So those are the three preset levels that you can have your entry price, your take profit and your stop loss. And so moving on, we have the spread and the slippage. Spread is the difference from the real price and the entry price of your trade. So every broker 
depending, no matter what asset class you're trading, they have some type of spread. So basically, if I'm entering at a thousand dollar mark, there's already a preset spread that the broker can only enter you at a thousand dollars in one or a thousand dollars in two. And it's always going to be opposite of what you trade. So if you're trying to go long, you want price to go higher, right? Your spread when you get in the trade is going to put you a little bit lower than where you actually wanted to get into. So you're always going to be in a trade a little negative. Most brokerage firms have very, very little now. Um, it's a very competitive market. So you're not going to have too many brokerage firms that are regulated that have really big spreads because no one will do business with them. So most of the spreads are pretty small. They're usually like one point or one tick, which we'll learn when we go over the different types of markets. Now, slippage, on the other hand, is the time difference between when you click the button to enter the trade and when the trade was actually placed in the broker's account. So if you remember like what I was saying before, when you enter the trade, you're telling the broker, hey, I want to go long at X amount of price. Then the broker actually places the trade with your brokerage account. That little time difference, hopefully it's only a few milliseconds. If it is over a few milliseconds and you're going into the seconds, then you need to either get a new broker or fix your internet connection. But that little time difference, that little difference in price is called the slippage. There's always going to be a little, little slippage. Hopefully you have very high internet speed, which is pretty accessible to most people nowadays. And most brokers have very high execution speed because once again, if your execution speed is slow, no one will want to do business with you and the broker will go out of business. Now we have commission. So commission is usually with the futures market. And basically it's just the fee to open a trade. Every broker has different commission. You have to check with your individual broker to find out the commission. They're usually pretty small. Like for example, the, um, the, that I work with, I'm not going to say their name cause I'm not affiliated with them, but it's about a dollar 24 cents to open a contract in the S and P 500. So hopefully you can afford the dollar and 24 cents. If not, then you probably shouldn't be trading with real money anyways. Then we have margin and leverage and margin trading allows a trader to be in positions larger than their account balance. The difference between your account balance and the amount required to enter to a position is loaned by the broker. Now this may sound a little complicated, but basically they have margin for trading so that you're able to be in positions larger than what you maybe have. So like if you wanted to trade $100,000 worth of gold, you don't need $100,000 worth. They're giving you some margin, some leverage to where maybe you only need $1,000, 10000 whatever the margin is. The standard across most brokerage firms is either 1 to 30 or 1 to 50. If you're dealing with more than 1 to 50, then you're probably dealing with an unregulated broker because at the time of this recording, the U.S. laws do not allow over 1 to 50. So you're usually dealing with one to 30, one to 50. It will be automatically calculated when you open your account before you place any trades, they will tell you how much margin you have and basically how big of a trade you can enter. And if you can't enter that size, they won't even place the trade for you. You'll get some type of error message saying maybe insufficient funds or something to that nature. And so here are all the account terms that we just went over. You can see all nine of them and they're pretty much straightforward. If you do need to refer back to these, I will have a PDF document in the description below. So you're able to download the PDF document. It'll be like that for all the videos in the course so that you're able to study this material and go over it until you have a good understanding of it. But that wraps up this portion of the first section. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the different types of markets that you can trade. And I'm also going to tell you what my personal favorites are. And so stay tuned in and I'll see you guys in the next video.